If I ever needed an excuse to tear my hair out for a second time this playthrough, Launch Bay Zone has given me that in spades. I probably should have considered actually going for a playthrough of this before I started recording it, but I wanted to go in fresh and kind of blind because, I mean, I've played Sonic 3. It's Sonic 3! How fucking different could it be? <laughs> KILL ME! Oh, God. You know, I literally spent so much time on the final boss of this zone, in particular, trying to record this over the course of two days, that I actually wanted to kill myself. I'm being hyperbolic, not literally. Point in case. Oh my god. I didn't think that just adding in the boss that originally existed at the end of Sonic 3 as the standalone game would make it that much harder, but... Oh, by the way, this lightning shield is actually an invincibility power-up in the base game. Also, a lot of those spike ball enemies are actually not in the original or in the launch base zone from Sonic and Knuckles. Vanilla. It's not even vanilla. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's easier. Anyway, let me continue. The final boss for this zone made me tear my hair out in frustration and anger. Oh. <coughs> Uh, excuse me. Oh my lord. If you ever wanted... <laughs> it's probably because... I have to be fair. Since I mostly have always just played Sonic and Knuckles together, I actually never really played Sonic 3 standalone. The boss, right? I spent at least an hour, maybe more, being realistic on this boss. I spent so much time on this boss that it accounts for at least half of the deaths in this montage that you're going to see near the end of the episode. But oh my god. You know, I thought the laser jet or the laser rocket thing that he flew in was hard, but oh my god. You know, once I got down that pattern, realistic it's relatively easy. But the freaking giant hand grabbing mech thing? Oh god. I wanted to kill myself. <laughs> but it did it for me. Ugh. Here's another example of uh, Sonic being a. Uh, or Super Sonic being able to be activated or deactivated at will. Which, again, I cannot stress enough, is the most useful feature if you want to make Super Sonic useful and still not have to waste all your rings or cheese the bosses. And you want to, you know, have more of, I guess, an incentive to use Supersonic, if that's what you want to call it. Redo! But, I digress. It's, it's literally one of the best features in this mod, ROM hack, whatever you want to call it. I love it. I love it. I love it. It also means I can use Supersonic a lot more frequently without worrying about, oh, well now I have to stand here for like 60 seconds while my rings run out before I can go take on the boss, because I don't want to cheese it, but... Yeah. Redundant? Much redundant? Uh, I hate you, Spike Ball! I hate you in Sonic Adventure 2, but I hate you even more in here. And I hate you, Flames. Uh, I hate you, Launch Base Zone! I like the music, but I hate you, Launch Base Zone! Oh, do I hate you! And I guess I should be fair. I don't hate the levels in this game it, for being, for, uh, how do I clarify? If I'm just comparing them to every other zone in this game, then yeah, I hate them. But if I was comparing them to other zones across all Sonic games, they're honestly some of my favorite. But when I complain about hating something, it's usually in the specific course of that particular game that I'm talking about, as opposed to the series in general. Unless I specify otherwise. Like, for example, one thing I absolutely always hate in the Sonic games, no matter what you possibly, no matter what form it exists in, no matter what it comes in, no matter where it comes up, I absolutely always, always, always hate Puke Bag Zone. Thanks, Clement, for naming it that, but I always hate Puke Bag Zone. It's the original Sonic 1 special stage design where everything looks like you're on acid and it's all trippy and it... Oh god, it can make you sick if you stare at it for too long. 
Yeah, we're not talking about eye strain issues, although that certainly is a problem if I played it for too long. For me personally. But, in general, it is just nauseating to stare at. Don't do drugs, kids. You wind up making blue hedgehogs. And shitty cartoon references. God damn you, Knuckles! You're supposed to be on the good guy's side, you lazy bastard. Or, yeah, even Eggman's doing most of the most of the work. You're literally just showing up when it's convenient for you, aren't you? You lazy bastard. And with that, we come to the first mini boss. The only, yeah, the first mini boss. It's technically two, three. But the first mini boss, and this is the second easiest one in this uh, zone. You have to hit him six times, and after you hit him the third time, his first uh, arm pops off. You hit him the th three times again, his second arm pops off, and you win. Really easy, but not the easiest. And with that, we've cleared Act 1, and we're going to get moving on to Act 2, which, if I must be honest... Is the easier of the two. There's a lot less for you to get hung up on in Act 2. It's a little bit more straightforward, I guess, what I'm looking for. Get the word I'm looking for. But the fucking frogs! And the fucking spike balls! And the fucking checkpoints! You know, all that stuff in the water is turning the friggin' frogs gay. This is what happens when you turn the frogs gay. Oh, that's a terrible joke. I honestly think that we can all agree, regardless of what your political opinions are, and this is all I'm really going to talk about on this channel regarding politics, but, but I think we can all agree, regardless of what your political opinions are, if you know who Alex Jones is, you think he's insane. And that's all I'm going to say on that front. FUCKING FROGS! Uh, I hate these fucking flamethrowers. I say fuck a lot. Hey look! Things that aren't normally there in the regular playthrough. And spikes. I just can't hold on to rings in this playthrough, can I? Wait for the flamethrower to go, then we drop, clap three rings, run through the base. You know, uh, most of the levels uh, in this game have multiple pathways, and that was something that, if I actually am being honest, I think that was something relatively... Uh, This is one of their major focuses for this game, was to offer the multiple pathways. And when I was a kid, I was used to take the lower pathways because I didn't understand. I thought if the lower pathways are the ones that are easier to platform on, it would probably be easier in general. No. <laughs> Just because it's easier to platform on, they offer more enemies and they're dicks to you. You're rewarded for good platforming with less enemies in a faster time. Apparently that didn't mess, that didn't sync up with little me, so I always thought, hey, if the lower pathways are this hard, the upper pathways must be even harder. Also, a side note, those spike ball enemies are not, they're in the base level, but I don't remember them being on the uh, mag mag ugh, magnetic drums that frequently. In fact, the one at the very start of the level isn't even there, I know that for a fact. But if you stick with the level and you just manage to be a little bit lucky and at least have one ring on you, you'll find your way to the end. Here shortly, I mean, you know, I'm pretty sure we're near the end. Everything looks like it's getting near the end. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, this is a post-commentary. I do do both, but this one's particularly post-commentary because I figured I would alternate what I decide to do. And if you're watching this now, my next Let's Play is going to be a Sonic Mania. I got that pre-ordered for the PC, and I'm going to be playing it as soon as it's available, and that'll be my next playthrough.
So stick around if you want to check that out. It's going to be a blind let's play. Haven't checked it out. Haven't watched. I watched one review on it, but it wasn't one that showed a lot of the game. So. Except, you know, Studioopolis Zone and Green Hill Zone. So, I'm uh, really looking forward to being able to play that, but I guess you could call Sonic 3 and Knuckles complete my warm-up to Sonic Mania. I might even title the uh, final video in the series that, but like I said, if you stick with the Perseverance and you just keep trying, you'll eventually find your way to the second mini-boss of this stage. And yes, I consider this a mini-boss because the real boss is next. And he's technically like a halfway boss, but this is the easiest. Especially if you can manage to glitch on him, which I have some footage of that I might put in an extra video or something. But I literally got to the point where you can actually glitch Tails up inside the area where Eggman is, and you can glitch yourself up inside where Eggman is, and you won't take damage. You'll just sit there and damage him. And it makes that fight basically a joke. And Knuckles is there, punching the metal flying car with enough force to knock it back in the air and yet somehow remain stable flight. But with the taking off of the Death Egg, he's going for a swim. At least Knuckles can swim, Sonic can't. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, if you manage to stick through it this far in the playthrough, I'm going to reward you with a little bit of a, I guess, a midway humor section. So, I'd like to thank you so far for watching, and after this episode, we will continue on with the boss fight. After this little mid-joke, we'll continue on with the boss fight, but... And now, a brief death montage. Moving at speed of sound, we try to kiss their talk around. Got ourselves a situation, stuck in a new location without any explanation. No time for relaxation. Don't, 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 don't wait. I don't think I just go, 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 go. So, I hope you enjoyed that. I figured it would be a nice little in-joke for Sonic fans, considering Sonic X was kind of terrible. I kind of enjoyed it when I was younger, but as I got older, the cheese factor just got too much for me. That and the voice acting. Oh god, the voice acting. But this is the laser jet rocket thing that you want to call it, and it is your final midway boss. This boss appears in Sonic and Knuckles, the base game, and once you, I think it has three stages, and once you defeat all three, you move on. However, if you've just been playing Sonic 3 standalone, here's a final part. And oh god, did these malicious fingers, in joke, actually drive me nuts. I could not stand this boss fight as you just saw. I died to it quite a few times. Quite a few annoying, annoying times. But I stuck with it, and eventually I kicked his ass. And this is the first time I've ever beaten this boss in Sonic, and I have it on record, and you guys are watching it with me. So feel proud of the nerd who conquered Eggman, or this particular version of Eggman, for the first time in his life. Oh, that was quite the triumph for me. Could I stroke my dick any longer? I know, I know, it's not that great, many people do it, kids younger than me have done it, but I feel proud, damn it! Also, the boss fight music, I love it. Um, but yeah, I guess in retrospect, if you can memorize the pattern, he's actually not that hard. I guess a lot of my biggest uh, problems earlier was pattern memorization and over jumping. Because hitting that area uh, in between his hands and his the spikes is actually kind of hard if you haven't practiced at it. And granted, after you know running at it like nine or ten times, I got good enough to do that, you fat balding bastard. 
that made me feel good. But with that, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoyed the midway point, and I will catch you for the rest of the game when we continue in Mushroom Hill Zone. With that, this is Nobody saying peace for episode 7. I'll catch you next time.